brief history of atoms. An ancient Greek philosopher called Democritus invented the word atom about 2,500 years ago. He had the idea that substances could be divided into smaller and smaller parts, and he found a particle so tiny it couldn't be divided anymore. He called these particles atoms, which means uncuttable in ancient Greek. The idea of atoms was ignored for centuries because scientists were more interested in studying whole substances. Then, in the 18th century, Amido of Rado in Italy began to study the way gases take up more or less space when temperature and pressure change. He guessed this happens because gases are made of tiny moving parts. And then, in 18 03, English chemist John Dalton was investigating how reactions work. He suggested that every element and compound must be made of minuscule particles. And he reused Democritus' word atom. Over the next hundred years, scientists came to believe that atoms must really exist. After the discovery of radiation in the 19th century, scientists began to realize that supposedly uncuttable atoms were actually made up of even smaller parts. In 1909, New Zealander Ernest Ruford used radiation to detect the nucleus of a gold atom. I bet that guy turned rich. And then, in 1813, Danish scientist Niels Bohr suggested a way that electrons could fit around an atom's nucleus. This finally explained how atoms react with each other. What about atoms and bonds? And here's all you need to know. Here we have an atom. We got nucleuses, shells, electrons, we got everything you need for an atom. This was the atom about a few years ago, 10 years ago, and this was the atom nowadays. Atoms are more stable if their outer shell is full of electrons. If they don't have a full shell, they will react with other atoms until they do, until they do. They can do this in three ways. Well, some atoms give or take electrons to become ions. There's positive ion. When you give, you become a positive one. When you take, you become the opposite. And here's some other thing. I mean, like sharing electrons, like water does. Water, it needs a full outer shell, which means eight electrons. But it doesn't have that many. But Luckily, hydrogen has one electron, and oxygen has six. So you get two hydrogens and one oxygen forming water, and it will be stable. And three, metal atoms join together in a giant metallic lattice, which is just pulling their electrons in a sea. So it flows all around them, and they all feel full. All right, that's all for today. Goodbye, and don't forget, 喜欢看中文的请搜索跟长荣学化学中文版。